Hey! Hey! We're back! We did it! Ah, oh, you guys didn't think we would. You fool. Here we are, you sons of bitches. Hey, it got mean. <laughs> <laughs> it's episode 66. 66. Of Alex and Jim. So, 600 more beca- before we can make that devil joke. Oh, man. That's going to be so great. It's Yeah, it's going to be worth it, though. 600 more, that's like... Yeah, 12 years. Yep. Yeah. Great. And it's definitely we're covering at least one song twice. (laughs) (laughs) If we haven't already. Yeah. (laughs) Um, It is episode 66 of Alex and Jim Analyze Billy Joel Lyrics. That's very important for uh, because I think a lot of people will binge this. (laughs) It's good to say the episode numbers because, you know, when you're binging something, you're like, how many have we watched? Yeah. Play and come back and you're like was it seven or nine i know six for sure people every couple hours the person has to remind the computer no no i'm actively listening to this right yeah this i didn't just leave this on i am present and accounted for yeah and the computer will go okay yeah i think most people my understanding is they'll do 20 at a time oh yeah and they like take a little break have uh, listen parties. <laughs> uh, uh, listen parties. Uh, I want to be invited to that party. Great. The best part about going to the, being it well, the best part about being invited to that kind of party is walking in and then go mm, no, and then you go back home. Yeah, those are my favorite parties. <laughs> uh, Have you done that? Have you turned around at the door at a party? Yeah. Yeah, I think I must have at some point. I don't recall. Um, yeah, I'm man, I'm not a fan of parties for the most part. I'm just not. I think maybe I told you this, but I I have a theory about parties, which is that you have to, you're not allowed to have a party unless your kitchen has uh two ways to get into the kitchen. Yeah. You can't have the one-way turnaround kitchen. No. The galley, galley kitchen, is that what that's called? The the dead end? Yeah, you can't do that and have a party because then you're going to be talking to somebody and there's no gracious way to seem like you were just continuing with the party. Right. You can only go, no more, Linda, and then that's it. Yeah. you got to have either have your trash can out or a little sign that says yeah. trash. Yeah. Nobody's, he's, oh, you just pulled this out. Well, I, I, there's no way for me to know that. Yeah. <laughs> Five times at least in every given party, I will walk up to a conversation in 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 mid convo. Yeah. And analyze whether or not I can get in there and that it would be worth it. And will I be a nuisance? And is that what I want right now? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Often, Yes. Uh, but at least five times when the answer is no walk other direction yep yeah yeah and and i Thanks. wish i wish more of us walked like muppets <laughs> uh, uh, the other thing that has happened to our show now our show uh-huh. has now also become alex and jim explain why they haven't recorded in a week and a half. That's oh, yeah. also part of our show. I've given, we got a very good reason, or I do. I do too. Why don't you go first? Right. Well, Sue and I went uh, in her car. That's how you say it, right? <laughs> you, yes. We went, <laughs> we went in her car to Ohio. We right. uh, drove out to Ohio to spend a week with her dad, who is uh, a bit infirm. So he likes to have frequent visitors to help him with stuff. Yeah. Um, like figuring out the what he calls the Raku, which is actually his Roku, <laughs> which is terrible that he can't remember the name because it is voice activated. Oh, great. So there was a lot of him saying, hey, Raku, Gene Autry Westerns. And it's like, oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Um, That's fantastic. But it was a long, it was, 
You know, when you visit an elderly parent, you are going to watch things you don't like, and it's going to be so hot and so carpeted. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, and it was all those things and not much else. Ah, uh, that's great. So, but I'm, it's nice to have some downtime for everyone involved, except yeah. for Sue, who was on high alert. Yeah, because it's her pop. Her pop, and it's a different game. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. Well, I think I had a better trip then um, because I had some road work. Oh, yeah. And that's why I was... Some road work done. Yeah, I got some road work done, yeah. <laughs> and uh, it was really fun. Uh, so I did this show and it was booked as clean comedy. Wow. And I could do clean comedy. And oftentimes they pay better huh. for whatever reason. And oftentimes the comics you're on there with are the only thing they have to offer is they're clean. Uh -huh. And so uh -huh. you kind of can look good by comparison, which is always nice. Right. Yeah, that's never going to be visually true for me. So sometimes it's nice when it's comedically true for me. Go on now. And, you uh, the road work done. That's true. You look great. So the gig was good. Um I will tell so I got to tell you two funny things about this. Well, this is I kept getting emails that go, you know, this is clean comedy, right? Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get it. I get it. And then another one that was to the group of comics who were booked. Just know that if you end up doing dirty comedy, we're not going to pay you. I was like, oh, okay, fine. But they kept sending reminders to the point where that was like jarring to me. Like, why do they keep sending yeah. reminders? And I found out when I got there that at the previous clean comedy show, one of the comics decided to burn it all down as stand-ups will. Uh. So it's a it is a show, by the way, where kids can show up. <laughs> uh, it's also a dry show. So wow. Yeah. So it's soda pops and you know, it's a lot of people who are really excited to politely laugh at your jokes. Okay. And is that's it like daytime. <laughs> Uh, almost. The show is at seven. Okay. Wow. It's just borderline a daytime show. The yeah. only time that seven o'clock show is only the only time it's reprobates is when you're at a casino when it's a seven o'clock show. Right. Because they do that a lot where they'll have a seven o'clock show because they're like, we got to get these idiots to the tables. So you do your show and then it's over. Right. Um, But what I found out was apparently the last show one of the comics goes, you know what I love? I love it when my boyfriend puts his cock in my mouth. <laughs> oh, boy. And that doesn't even sound like a joke as much as that's just somebody telling you about who they are. Yeah, that, <laughs> that should be in your intro. Yeah. It, so what I, I... Wow. Yeah, so it was obviously a comic decided to burn this thing to the ground, and I can't... I'm trying to imagine why, and the only thing I could think is that maybe another comic happens to be conservative, and they said something that pissed him off, and he was like, "Well, f these people." I don't know. Yeah, there was some some reason. Some yeah, something happened back, or the organization did something to that comic that they didn't yeah. like, or they found or it wasn't great or something. Yeah, or he's a comic. Comics are often dicks. Yeah, self-destructive dicks. Yeah. So, and I I just intended to do, I had a lot of stuff that I'd like to talk about now, my dogs, endlessly. Sure. Like, if you booked sure. me for a no-dog material show, I'd have a tough time doing that show. <laughs> are there a lot of those clean shows? Yeah. Some of them are a little subtler in how they title it but you know what uh, you're getting like are you familiar with the dry bar series oh the name's familiar yeah because they've kind of carved a little niche for themselves okay. well that's what that is but the thing about the clean comedy is it's also like a lot of them don't want you to talk about politics and blah blah, blah. and uh, fine yeah. Fine. And so you end up getting some of the comics are good, but you also end up getting a lot of pun comics. <laughs> right. Yeah. Or, or as they're sometimes called, 
not comics. Hey. Yes. Anyway, everybody on it was delightful, and they gave me a check when it was done. The dream. I am still always amused when I get paid with a check. <laughs> <laughs> Is it usually not a check? It's usually cash. It's usually a cash business. Yeah. yeah. Well, because a lot of times, so if you're working at a casino, a lot of times they're hoping to get the money back from you quickly. <laughs> yeah. So the casino, a lot of times they'll pay you right then and there. Right. And uh, and a lot of times you're working at a bar and it makes sense for them to settle up right then and there rather than have this thing on the books. Right. So. Yeah, yeah that's probably, a lot of it is they don't want anything on the books, period. For tax. Yeah, the, yeah, that yeah. is probably true. But here's my favorite thing that happened with the show. Uh, this guy I knew from before, an older fella, uh, who will never see this podcast because there's no way he'll figure out how it works, so it's fine. But he's an older guy, uh, friended me on Facebook, and I haven't seen hide nor hair from him in a long time, and I was like, well, sure, that's fine. We'll say hello. <laughs> and the first thing he did was immediately like the post about the show and promote it. And he immediately said, hey, guys, let's all go out and support this show. Two things. It had been over for a week. <laughs> uh, he does not live near me. Huh. So I'm not sure. But he promoted it as thanks for promoting it, I said, because what am I gonna say? It's fine. <laughs> so if you're if you can travel through both distance and time, because those would be the two issues. For right. where he's living, uh, you could still see the show. Right. And that's what you'd want to do if you were a time traveler. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> to see some clean comedy. That would, what if, how, if you're at a party <laughs> and people do the dumb, what would you do with the time machine? And somebody gave that answer, that's the best answer. Well, well I'd I go back. It's not a bad thing to do with a, a time machine to go to like, I would love to go to like a 70s fondue party. <laughs> yeah. It's like weird sunken living room. Yeah. Just go to different parties of different decades. Yeah. Go to a 70s swinger key party with that group of weirdos where, the, where they're still dressed nice. <laughs> <laughs> but don't, don't put the keys to the time machine in the bowl. Rookie mistake. Rookie mistake. Mistake. And you're trapped in the 70s. That's right. Some fucking pervert is <laughs> here in the present. That's right. Oh, <laughs> that's really funny. But some pervert with giant, giant... <laughs> giant lapels. Giant. Can't figure out why women expect to be treated well. Yeah. <laughs> Although they and they don't expect much even now, really. I guess they just want a little better. It's just thinking of yeah, <laughs> just some was, decency. Yeah, so the show was good, and then it got promoted by this guy. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's great. I think yeah. the best thing I saw, or the thing that made me chuckle the most in Ohio, and by the way, it's not very funny out in Ohio. Oh, it doesn't sound too funny. Not a lot to laugh at. Yeah. My favorite thing was over and over again, I would see a Trump sign in somebody's driveway and I'd be like, oh, fuck, I'd get so mad. And then I would get closer and see that it was a Trump Pence sign, like still up in their driveway. I'd be like, oh, they haven't heard. <laughs> They're in, those fellas are on the outs. Oh, that's fantastic. So, yeah. And that's weird because I understand bumper sticker on your car that you made a mistake of putting there. That's hard right. to take off, but sign that's sitting there. Big sign. Like uh, there were people, multiple, like painted on the sides of barns and stuff. Yeah. Trump. Great. He would not spend the night in this town, but okay. Yeah. Here's a sign you see on the regular when you're going on the road to do comedy in California and you're driving 
towards red areas is uh -huh. just, it'll say Gavin Newsom quit wasting our water <laughs> I don't know what people think Gavin Newsom is doing with your water but he's not the problem no he ain't great or perfect or anything like that actually he's doing a fine job a perfectly serviceable job but he's not the reason we have water issues it's much more complex than that. I mean, honestly, if he was, then fine. I would let's get rid of him. If he's the water problem, he's the whole problem. It's not the fact that it's a giant desert. Yeah, it's not the people in it. It's not the fact that they've been doing hinky math. That's the weirdest thing that I. I'm sure you knew for years. Did you know this for years? The hinky math about they do with water reserves. No. So there's particularly in this area, but also when you get closer to the Hoover, what is it? Part that feeds uh, Vegas and everybody. Is that the Hoover yeah, Dam? The Hoover Dam, yeah. So there's a lot of different places that have dibs on that water. Oh, I see. But there's not a possible way it can sustain what people demand from it it is inevitable that there's just not going to be enough water right so they play with the numbers so that it seems like it gotcha. but when they have interviewed i saw an interview with a guy who's one of his jobs is is to deal with water rights and everybody getting their fair share of water he they say why do you use these numbers and he said because if you don't use these numbers there's not enough water. <laughs> wow. And it's out in the open. It's not a secret. It's not shady behind the doors. They're playing with the math. No, this, it probably was shady. They were playing with the math at one time. Yeah. But that person has long since retired and died. Now wow. that's just the math they use is just the math of denial yeah wow yeah i don't know when it's going to happen or if there's another solution one solution is to run dasani out of business that's actually what should happen yeah that should have happened a while ago uh there will come a time and i'm like did sani do you want to see what pitchforks look like because you're <laughs> monsters and that's that's not good my goodness Anyway, um, how great is that? The water conversation we had. <laughs> so they basically promised out like 130% of the water they had. Yeah. Yeah. That's probably on the low end at this point. Yeah. It's, oh, what I was going to say is I wonder at some point, is Vegas just going to disappear? Feels like it has to. I think it has to, right? And yeah. I think LA has to do a, a major contraction. Yeah. At some point. Yeah, absolutely. It just, well, and honestly, I wonder how much of it would be solved with the disappearance of Vegas, because that's a lot of water to try to do what they're doing. Right. Yeah, the, that's true. And the entire city is founded on the dreams of criminals, literally. <laughs> literally. And it has no natural water. Yeah. Not some. Yeah. <laughs> None. Yeah, none. Like the best you could do as well. You, all of us, can we all subsist on cactus juice? Because there's not much in a cactus. <laughs> Once you're gambling. Yeah, that's true, man. It fucking, doesn't matter. Yeah, eventually the house wins. In this case, the house is uh, arid death. <laughs> <laughs> Episode 66. Uh, and you know what? It ain't no crime. That's what we're talking about. It ain't no crime. Yeah. How would unlike, you unlike the founding of Vegas? Yeah. <laughs> this, this ain't no crime. This is off of Piano Man. Uh what are, let me see what I wrote down. Okay, cool. I want to make sure I have this thing written down for next week. Anyway, ain't no crime. It's off of Piano Man. And we were talking about how our loathing to ever talk about Piano Man. Stopped us from even looking at the album for a while. Right. 
Right, there are some hidden gems, semi-precious yeah. gems. Yeah. A man some of them are just rocks. Some of them are just rocks. Yep. <laughs> but an artist clearly coming into his own, about to become the Billy Joel that we know and love. Yep. Much more confident. Yeah. Doing some experiments and uh, throwing out some sky commas. Yep. So a lot how, of this song. <laughs> how would you describe the music? I like the music. I just didn't get a like hook and how to describe it. It's like honky tonky. Yeah. Um, it, I guess it's blues ish. Yeah. It's a real amalgam, I think. Yep. And I guess because it's early, still pretty early, 1973, I guess it's early enough that it, it's almost like in the early days, he was better at not trying to sound too much like a thing. Yes. That it I would bug you. Good. And I wonder why that would be the case. I think you he probably had more time yeah to work on stuff um more freedom from a record company I would think yeah and you know uh early in your career I think you're more creative yeah okay I could see that you get older and lazier and you have more distractions and you're like well I'll just do one that sounds like a band I like <laughs> yeah <laughs> That makes sense. It's just funny because I thought this is so weird. Like Aerosmith is the example I always give. Uh, Dream On is an amazing song. Yeah. It's like one of their first songs. <laughs> yeah. And then they get more and more stupid. I still like the band, but you can't say their later hits. If you like them, you like them because they're incredibly dumb. Yeah, they're based, they're novelty songs. Yes, borderline novelty. They really are. It's like, okay, let, that that dude looks like a lady. I gotcha. And <laughs> there's all that kind of stuff. But he writes this like wickedly perfect song with a great observation. It'll it you'll like it even more as you get older because it'll bum you out. <laughs> yeah. And then later on just weird stuff and he's on less drugs later <laughs> well there you go could be a problem yeah maybe maybe i've been wrong about drugs this whole time <laughs> i think you're right about the things you're right about with regard to drugs yeah but also i'm sure it opens you up creatively yeah yeah of course it does and you know just destroys other things like livers and such that's the thing but when was the last time a liver put out a good fucking album it's been a while 81 yeah i want to yeah, say 81 yeah. <laughs> and it's only okay it's, it's not only. like it's great yeah you're like oh for a liver <laughs> <laughs> remember that on uh the flintstones when that one at when the the doctor uh squirrel would go it's a liver i don't know. <laughs> squirrel why squirrel what's a um, prehistoric squirrel remember those prehistoric squirrels that you're... <laughs> they were bigger right yeah I and mean, they not much either just like uh, <laughs> no, uh, much. Uh, oh, well. uh, modern <laughs> squirrel jurassic squirrel <laughs> uh, Squirrel in 300 a, million years. Man, what a what a great improv brain I had. Think of a dinosaur, Jim. Squirrel. Squirrel, I said. Squirrel. Uh I stand by it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no. I think their bones are hollow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Why don't you uh bust out with some lyrics? Oh man. Uh, you. <laughs> it was like you didn't know we did that part. <laughs> I, I was, I had briefly forgotten, <laughs> and then I looked at the first line, and I was like, "Oh, I don't want to say it with the voice." <laughs> you got to open your eyes in the morning, nine o'clock coming, without any warning. 
and you got to get ready to go. Here's for, I want to say, first of all, that nine o'clock comes with plenty of warning. Yeah, both because, of them. Yeah, because eight o'clock gives you a heads up. Eight o'clock is a solid warning. And seven is like even you, you've had a lot of warning from a lot of times on the o'clock. There's 8.58? Yep. That's like a siren. Yeah. I also want to note that this is the at least the second song on Piano Man that mentions 9 o'clock. <laughs> Man, Billy Joel feels about 9 o'clock the way Garfield feels about Mondays. <laughs> not, not a fan. <laughs> I think in Piano Man he likes 9 o'clock. Oh, yeah, but that's on a Saturday. <laughs> that, that's true. <laughs> this is clearly not Saturday. Not Well, you know what, though? He's fucking right, though, because 9 o'clock at night is better than 9 o'clock in the morning. He's right about that. Absolutely. On a weekend, forget about it. Yeah. 9 uh, is a good time because there's the even if you're drinking, you're like, oh, this could end up fun. It's not until 12 you realize, oh, I was wrong about this. So... We, all we know so far is this guy having trouble getting up by nine. Yeah. He's not uh, not at uh, Gary Goldman levels, but still. <laughs> it's a weekday. Yeah. Um, most of us have to be at work by nine. Yeah. That so meant... That. This is such an early song, too, because it dawns on me that Billy Joel maybe at this point could relate to having having to get up at nine yes that's not true later because you've gotten your dream you're a rock star so yeah right. and now he probably gets up two or three times every night <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah uh, two i can make that joke because i also do yeah two six and nine come without a warning <laughs> <laughs> oh so, okay. You say you went out late last evening, did a lot of drinking, come home stinking, <laughs> and you went and fell asleep on the floor. Well, there's your problem. Yeah. It's nine o'clock will be very early under those circumstances. Yes. But so he's talking, you know, it's weird because I thought it was just like, the initial you gotta, yeah, I, I took as a one must, as opposed to talking to an actual you. Yeah. So now he's clearly he's uh, he's maybe lecturing somebody. A specific you, yeah. Be developing an early tendency to lecture people. I was going to say that's so funny. Yeah. About the way they're living. Come home stinking, drinking and stinking. A lot of sky commas in this one. Jimmy Christmas. It's a Goldman gem. And O'Clock, by the way, is also a thing Goldman talks about. <laughs> great. That's pretty great. Oh, Maybe he's oh. talking to Gary Goldman. Maybe Gary, Gary Goldman's the one to sleep on the floor. <laughs> Did he do a lot of drinking? I feel like he was just depressed. Boy, I bet he didn't do much at all. He's got so <laughs> much anxiety, I can't ever see him thinking of himself, oh, this would be a good idea. <laughs> you went and fell asleep. Have you ever felt, by the way, have you ever done the drinking, woke up, falling asleep on a floor? Uh, yes. I, I, well, I fell asleep uh, in a yard <laughs> once uh, right there on Speedway. Yeah. That's Somebody great. had a house down there on Speedway near that weird park. I uh in the yard and was awakened by actual sunlight. That's great. And I have uh, also slept on a bathroom floor and was awakened by a, a screaming uh roommate who thought you were hurt or they were Not just my roommate, mm -hmm. uh, the lady's roommate. Oh, when they discovered you, and were they screaming about you? Yes, they ah. thought I was dead. Oh, wow. Yeah. And I only wished I was dead. <laughs> my favorite waking up on the floor drunk was I went to my friend's party for, I don't remember why, but we had a party. And I decided 
I decided I'm not going to drink anything until midnight. But at midnight, I'm drinking all the things because I thought that seemed funny to me. And I stand, I stand by that that's a funny thing to do because the whole, the whole party, I'm stone cold sober and other people are getting drunk and I'm stone cold sober, but I keep mentioning, no, no, I'm not drinking till midnight. (laughs) Midnight, I started doing shots, but I made as, or influenced all the people who had already been drinking to have the same amount of shots as me. (laughs) Which I think might be evil. Yeah. So, but yeah, I mean, you didn't make them. Yeah, I didn't. And then I kept doing this thing that would make them laugh because they were drunk. They were like, "Okay, that's enough." And I and I would go, "Yeah, I agree, but just one more." <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and I had, had drank a lot, but that means they had drunk way more. Yeah, and were they all asleep on the floor with you? Uh, there were a lot of people passed out at that party. <laughs> There, but other people managed to get to couches and for some reason because i could feel my face hit the carpet yeah and i was like ah oh, forget it that's fine <laughs> and i was just and i was like huh. and i woke up at a gary goldman time it was probably like two because my friends who owned the house well they weren't getting up no. nobody, nobody was getting up <laughs> jesus Oh, what was wrong with us? Oh, man. Yeah. And then it was, of course, Del Taco. That was what was the next move. Ah, the cure. Yeah. (laughs) The things that made you go, make you realize that, well, there are things worse than booze. Yeah. Yeah. Fell asleep on the. Okay. And then you got a little more. Okay. And then your lady comes and finds you (laughs) asleep. Starts into weeping about the hours you've been keeping, and you better get your ass out the door. Oh. Well, it escalated. Yeah. Very good job of escalating the tension. Yeah. This for <laughs> sure is an attempt to write kind of a blues song because you're drinking too much and your lady kicks you out the door. That's a yep. prominent topic for blues. Yep. And the commas, for sure, that's how regular folk talk. <laughs> <laughs> it Maybe he buried the lead a little bit with that first. Yeah. Oh, nine o'clock's here without any warning. I'm like, yeah. well, you kind of made your own bed. Yeah, things are actually much worse than just that it's already yeah. nine. <laughs> <laughs> That's also funny, too, because nine is not that early. I don't care what anybody says. It's not that early. It's only early to, like, 60-year-old men from, who were 60 in the 70s. Yeah. They're long dead. They don't care how late you sleep now. Right. Those guys are, like dirtbag teens. Yeah. There's, yeah then, even then, only on the weekend, really. Yeah. That's nine o'clock. Come on. So he had he got kicked out while he was sleeping. Got yeah. woke up and kicked out of the house. Yeah, ended up somewhere, and now has to get up at nine and go to work. Yeah, I th- think so. Um, I do like the chorus. Now thinking about the chorus, I think the chorus which you'll read because then I'll read the next set. But the chorus seems to be the dude responding, right? I think so. Yeah. Lashing out, you might say. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Ain't no crime. Yeah, it's good to get it on, to get a load off your mind. It ain't no crime. Well, everybody gets that way sometime. It ain't (laughs) no crime. Oh, 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 it's good to get it on. To get a load off your mind. I think he means get like get your drink on. I think so, too. Generalized version of uh, just going nuts and partying. Yeah, it's not the other different lady. 
Yeah. Oh, it could. Be. I don't think so, though, because, yeah, to get it on usually means, you know, the sweet, sweet love making. But the, yeah, you're right. I think this is just get it on as in it is in it's it's good to just drink a shitload <laughs> to get a load off your mind. Yeah, it ain't. I guess let's say technically true. Yeah, ain't ain't a crime. Yeah. Could lead to crimes. Yeah. Certainly uh, moral and relationship problems. Yeah. Let me ask you, do you and think... If he drove home, that's a crime. Yeah, that's true. And uh, he, has done, he has done that at least once till we know of. <laughs> um, do you think the word, the word load here is intentionally uh, double meaning? Or just it's I'm seeing a coincidence here. I'd say I think it's a coincidence of slang. Yeah. Um, I think we know what get it on means now. I yeah. think it just meant do things. <laughs> yeah. Hey, but, uh, you guys want to make paper airplanes? Yeah, let's get it on. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Actually, that works. But I was specifically load because you get loaded. Yeah, that's uh, not that's just a coincidence, right? That's just a I think so. Yeah, it would I, be too clever to say like it's good to get loaded to get a load off your mind. Yeah, uh, this would be a good call and response song, by the way. It really would because we're objectively it's two different people. That would be fun yes. performed that way. That would be a good way for this to be performed. Bruno Mars and Billy Joel, you just finally together. <laughs> We've had a couple of those call and response offers. Yeah. A couple not, of offers out to Bruno. Not nearly enough have been taken up. No. Is it one? Oh, no, it's zero. Zero silver. <laughs> Still zero. Well, we're not going to stop trying. Yeah. Um. I also have a sky comma in the middle of everybody, which doesn't seem necessary. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> everybody. Ever, like yeah. Everybody says everybody. Yeah. And then you just might as well put it in the middle of gets. <laughs> you know? Yeah. You gotta open your eyes in the morning. Nine o'clock coming without any warning. And you got to get ready to go. Well, now you tell me you love somebody and you'll love them forever. Uh huh. You, you may love them forever. <laughs> go on. But you won't like them all of the time. Well, I like that. That's um, very true and accurate. Yeah, it's a, it's, clumsy where we're getting there because we started out with just repeating the thing about how bad we don't like nine o'clock <laughs> and you got to get ready to go well now you tell me you love somebody and you love them forever you may love them forever but you won't like them all the time i like that though and i wonder if this is the resentment you feel for the person making you get up at nine o'clock even though they're in the right <laughs> Or is it her? Is she not going to like him? Yeah. Him, I don't like this sleeping on the floor shit. <laughs> oh, so she's, he's, so our narrator is a third character. He's talking to him. Now he's talking to her. Really leaning into his uh, future tendency. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Tell people uh, uh, little moral plays. Right. Here's how you should feel about stuff. All right. I'm leaving now. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Don't drink too much. Also, but don't hey, don't don't watch me, but you don't drink too much. <laughs> yeah, don't don't look at me. But you won't like them all the time. But that is a good line. You may love them forever, but you won't like them all the time. Right. Very bluesy. Could yeah. be a country influence. For sure. Well, now you tell me you need somebody for the rest of your life. You might have somebody, but you won't want him every day. I like that less because that's just saying the same thing again. <laughs> yeah. 
I like that much, much less. It's I the don't. same. It's also clumsier than the <laughs> earlier version. Yeah, that for sure feels like, oh, I wrote this great line. Ugh, there's still more music to fill because this is the size of the music. Okay, well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just keep, uh, you know. Yeah. This is, this is first draft stuff. Yeah. It's close, though, because that's a damn good line. Ain't no crime. Say <laughs> everybody gets that way sometime. Ain't no crime. Well, it's just human nature. Happens all the time. Oh, no, it ain't no crime. I do like, well, it's just human nature. That's super, a super bluesy excuse for yeah. unacceptable behavior. <laughs> yeah. And that also uh -oh. makes me think maybe your cheating idea was right, too. Maybe that's in there too, because you know, get a you know, it's good to get it on, uh -huh. uh, and just hey, that's that's the blues excuse. Hey, you know, I love you, woman, but a man has needs. <laughs> like, um, yeah, happens yeah. all the time. It ain't no it's a terrible excuse for anything. Yeah. If you look at what's happening all the time, it's mostly garbage. Yeah. Uh, murder, murder happens a lot. Yeah, yeah. Lots of murder. Mail fraud. Mail fraud. <laughs> a blue song about mail fraud. Mail fraud happens all the time. Uh, pets get ill. Yeah, you got to get up in the morning because you're early because your neighbor gets up earlier and you're stealing their mail. So you got to get up early <laughs> if you're going to gonna steal their uh, mail. Which is a crime. Oh, but he says it ain't no crime. Oh, yeah. Well, those blues guys. <laughs> you can't. <laughs> I don't really, don't really know the law that well. That's fair true of the blues guys for sure. <laughs> or they don't care about it. Uh, sh 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 everybody got to shoot up a bank sometime. Ain't no crime. No, no. Human nature, man. <laughs> hey, somebody's got to shoot that bank. Am I supposed to get the money out of the bank? Oh, do you want to do the last one? There ain't much left. Yeah, there ain't, there ain't no crime. Left. There ain't no crime. Where am I? Well, it's good to get a load to get a load off your mind. Hey, it ain't no crime. It's just human nature. Happens all the time. It ain't no crime. No. By the way, I'll stop there for a moment just to say, like, he's being very, the narrator is saying this ain't no crime. Yeah. He's really letting them off the hook in a sweet way. Well, that's true. Yeah, that's true. And and well, he his powers of uh, sarcastic condemnation are maybe not fully realized. Yeah, he hasn't come into yeah his full that's bloom. His, yeah, writing brain still thinks like, oh, I got to let these characters off the hook. <laughs> I want people to like them. Yeah. Oh, you got to open your eyes in the morning. Nine o'clock coming without any warning. And you got to get ready to go to court. And just as surely as the wind keeps blowing, the grass keeps growing, you got to keep going, and the Lord will have mercy on your soul. Well, that is terrible. Is terrible and feels very much like the 1970s. Yeah. There's, uh, yeah, what do we got? Grass is growing, wind is blowing. Yeah. Very common folk themes. Yeah. Just noticing stuff that's outside because they don't have enough money to uh, rent a place to go inside. <laughs> like, oh, what can I write a song about? Yeah. Well, what's happening here in the park during <laughs> work hours? Yeah, yeah. Not that's, much. That guy keeps a pee in. <laughs> <laughs> The squirrel's getting smaller. <laughs> the squirrel's getting smaller. That's what they always say. <laughs> over the over the epochs. <laughs> the squirrels got smaller. Uh, if you were just a specialist, right, in archaeology, and that was your specialty, you had all these squirrels lined up, and you're like, see, they're noticeably smaller, student, but not very noticeable is what I I it's not very noticeable. That's your whole <laughs> career. Your whole career is the squirrels. Uh, when I was in college, we went on a marine biology field trip to, I think it was the, the Scripps Institute in uh, Puerto Penasco. 
down there in Rocky Point, Mexico. I've been to Rocky Point. Uh, they have a little lab there. They have, you know, a big aquarium that you can tour and stuff. But they also have people doing real marine biology stuff there. Yeah. And so met a scientist and he was like, here's this is the thing I've been working on for two years. And it was the mating habits of roly polies. Um, and I was like, wow, that was, I think that was the first time in my life. I really met like a super hyper specialized specialist Yeah, in the sciences. And I remember thinking like two years is for, is a giant percentage of your life. Yep. Cause I was in 19. It still is Gee, it's still a pretty good percentage, but you know, it's, I also at that time was very literal. Yeah. I didn't realize, oh, he did this all day. And then he did other stuff at night, <laughs> weekends and stuff. It was like two years of my life dedicated to this. And no part of me was like, yeah, but also other stuff. <laughs> You're like, that's all you were talking about at dinner. Yeah. The only thing that makes I not being a scientist, but I, but reading a lot about different sciences, yeah. I'm sure his hope. I'm sure it was motivated at least in part by, oh, nobody's done this. I'll have a notable paper. Yeah. I'll be published in some journal and that'll be something that'll make me happy because that's that's the thing. So many science, you hear about so many scientists too who have some like theory, pet theory or whatever. Yeah. And then they do a really good job and prove it wrong. <laughs> yep. And you've done your job and you did good. You did actual science and you didn't yep. you didn't get broken and decide to try to trick people like they did with that, you know, cloning thing. <laughs> right. Man. Oh boy, a whole roly still get polis. The paper. You still yeah. get the paper. Yep. I hope the title of his roly po poly paper was How Roly Polies Be Fuck It. <laughs> uh that's what i'd call it yeah yeah i think yep. that's like a track on an eddie murphy album <laughs> <laughs> roly polies be fucking uh, yeah i wonder how roly polies be fucking <laughs> oh roly polies be fucking like this mollusks be fucking like this very <laughs> different funny how different they are uh, 10 minutes 58 seconds <laughs> Uh, yeah. It's better to watch the live video feed of him in the leather jacket walking back and forth with <laughs> Rolly Polies. Uh, and by the way, Eddie Murphy also walks like a Muppet. Like Everyone a Muppet. walks like a Muppet. <laughs> it's great that you're wearing your your Kermit shirt uh, <laughs> for the Muppet demo. I have always done that, by the way, acted out walking. I assume you're saying that for the audience because I know that. Yep. <laughs> well, I did this bit in stand-up. It's actually on the special I recorded, but I do do a bit about going to a um in to a swinger party. It's a bit about going to a swinger party. Part of this party, part of the joke is if you don't know what a swinger party is, it's your chance to have sex with lots of ugly people. That's the heart of the joke because hot people aren't go, don't go to swinger parties. Life is a swinger party to, to for them. But then at one point I go, it's the kind of party where you go, ah, oh, that lady has plenty of teeth. And then I then I I walk over to her, and then I realize <laughs> how dumb that was. I was like, yep, that's me at a swinger party. Doop, 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 doop. Having so much fun, just the silliest walk for a swinger. <laughs> uh... I also. I'm going to keep doing it, but somewhere in my yeah. mind, somewhere in my mind, I must think, oh, I got to show them what walking is. They don't know what the fuck is wrong with me. <laughs> the rest of the bit won't make sense if they think yeah. I'm still far away from her. If they're still struggling with this detail, walking, he said. <laughs> so the murmur goes through the crowd. Have you heard of this? I haven't heard of this. Then I just... make sense later. <laughs> keep listening. Oh, no, it never made sense. Yeah, he never explained it. You can't just say that and not tell me what the fuck that is. <laughs> anyway, let's get back to the car somehow. 
Uh, I, crawls out. Yeah. <laughs> and then when I do explain it, not only did they enjoy the show, they have a better way to make it back to the car. I've helped them. <laughs> you help them, you help the casino. Yeah. Takes them three hours to clear the house every night. That's right. How did these people not hear about it? Eh, you know, it's a... What if there was a fire? <laughs> life save you saved lives with that that's true although they are safe from the smoke so. oh that's true oh um, you maybe you killed some people <laughs> that's right one or two i killed because they're not used to walking and they're much slower they <laughs> got that baby, baby walk <laughs> inhaling smoke the whole time yeah well obviously this kitty cat wants to say hello to everybody hello. yeah bring it that's dolce ow <laughs> <laughs> Dolce, we've concluded, does not have the retract function. <laughs> oh, well. Whenever you pick her up, she means well, but they're always out. Oh, wow. Yeah. So she gets That's... a lot. Her nails clipped a lot. Oh, and she stands for that? Uh, yeah, she she's such a lovey girl. She don't mean oh. any harm. They just don't go back in. Our cat is very loving, and she, but if you try to give her a manicure, for, that's it. Yeah, I can't. Life. Can't be done. I understand why, because they're probably nervous because they instinctively know that quick, right, is pretty prominent. Like, and by the way, this is a tip for you at home. I'm just taking a break. Don't clip your cat's nails unless you know what you're doing, because the quick they can bleed really bad. Yeah, so you got to get the special clippers with the little stop on it. Yeah, you have to do that because it's not like your nails. It's because yeah. you know when to stop on your dumb nails. And you have to tell tell the cat before you try to clip the nails. Like I read about the quick. Yeah. I know about that. So you can chill. Yeah. See if they, that works. And they get it. Cause when I use the word quick, that's what they know it by. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what do you think? I think I like this song, by the way. I do like it. It's a good, you know, it feels like it should be on a jukebox in a shitty bar, and it'd be great if it came on. Yep, it's good to listen to. It ain't, you, I don't think you'd seek it out, but you're right. If it popped on, you wouldn't mind. Uh, if, if if this podcast has taught us anything, is that it's better to listen to the songs than talk about the words. <laughs> I think there's probably at least a couple people who figured that episode by episode four, but still. Right. But stay, stay with it. Stay with it because we talk about a lot of other nonsense. Yeah. yeah. Uh, signs in Ohio. Yeah. Hey, look at that behind me. Oh, ooh. it's a Chevy. Yeah. Yeah. That's a pace car. Yes, it is. Oh. Ah. Setting the pace. Yeah. And don't go too fast, everybody. Want to make sure I'm leading the pack. I'm the leader of the pack. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's right. Billy Joel, leader of the pack. <laughs> uh, uh, he's ahead well, of the pack. Well, let's see. Um, it's the pace car for sure. Pace car, it's out in front. Yeah. Hey, let's say this is that guy's first day on the job. <laughs> maybe he's new to this job oh he's a, a new driver setting the pace and he's, he he has to figure out how to do his job oh i gotta figure out how to set the pace slow down you crazy child <laughs> <laughs> uh what has he got to learn uh, how to slow down how to set the pace how to keep the pace. Yep, he's got to learn how to set the pace. That's almost the lyric. <laughs> it is? Well, oh, learn yeah. Pace. Pick up the word pace is the key here. Oh, <laughs> uh, why didn't I sleep more last night? And it, I it's get it. up at 4 9 today. Oh, my goodness. You got a 9 o'clock came without a warning. Yeah, no, nothing. <laughs> um, yeah, pace. It's a hit, by the way. This was a hit. We've talked about it. <laughs> You're making it worse. Uh, and, and he's dr drowning in carpet. He's Billy Joel's drowning in carpet. 
Okay. Well, I, now I know the song. And yet I can't, I still can't think of the lyric that Pace, where Pace comes in. In fact, uh, it's very close to the beginning of the song. <laughs> it's something that, uh, you know. You, ha you have to learn to pace yourself. You've got to learn to pace yourself. Yep. Fuck. Hey, but I did a favor to our friend Dave. I, oh, I, I didn't linger on this one and go, here's nine bad clues. <laughs> oh. Yep, Man, you have to learn. To happy, Dave. <laughs> My goodness. <laughs> Learn to pace yourself. Yeah, I can't remember the one of my my friend Dave on Twitter. He made a an Alf joke recently that was a really lovely reference to that show. And I was like, "That's a nice joke." And then uh, it was about the reality of the show. And then I posted just a response, and my response was just, "There should have been an episode of Alf where Alf was like, oh, I guess it's a big deal that I.'" Eat. Uh, cats, uh, you guys eat cows and other animals too. You're hypocrites, and they get into a very serious ethical discussion. <laughs> Alf comes home from college for Thanksgiving. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh, I don't like that. Oh, his joke was he goes, There should have been at least one time you where he went, You know, my name's, name's not Alf, it's Gordon. Why do dicks always call me Alf? Yeah. And it's an acronym. Yeah. You don't call people that are acronym I mean, racists. No. Yeah. Did they call E.T. E.T.? They might have. I think they did because, but in that case, it was because E.T. didn't go, uh, you know. Right. I'm red. Kevin. What's yeah, I'm Kevin. Yeah. <laughs> Kevin, I'm Kevin the alien. Uh, so can we call you E.T.? No. No. Oh, why? What? My Gross. name is Kevin. You guys are, huh. you know what? The peanut butter pieces doesn't make up for it. <laughs> it doesn't. I'll, I'll take them. Yeah. We're not even. That's right. And so yep. carbon kids. That is the pace car. This is the pace car. You've got to learn to pace yourself. Pressure. Not like everybody else. That was. <laughs> I remember when Casey Kasem did that cover. <laughs> ah, I Never, just, I'm thinking of DJs who just would always just say a bunch of the lyrics. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes at the end, often at the beginning, which is even worse. Yeah, how often do you do that? Because I do this a lot where you'll just be being a silly voice and you'll go, oh, I think I'm almost doing an impression. Many times. <laughs> and then you try to do the impression and can't get it. Yeah, it's how I figured out I could do a Ray Romano because I can actually do a Ray Romano. Oh. You've, heard, you've heard my Ray Romano, right? Oh. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Come on. Come on. Come on. Uh, many times I've said like, hey, I can do this impression and I'll do a voice and somebody will say, that sounds more like different celebrity. <laughs> uh, great. Now I, I have an impression of that person then. I have two impressions. <laughs> or one, but I didn't lose. <laughs> lose any impressions do you remember our you know our friend remember our friend tim bennett sure briefly he had a kevin costner impression <laughs> and it was great it was you were like because kevin costner is one of those celebrities that you can't imagine having an impression of him yeah those you're like yeah so for a little brief period of time he had a Kevin Costner impression and I loved it. And he would do it every now and then for a sketch or whatever. And then we were doing something where we needed to do a sketch where he did his Kevin Costner and he had forgotten how to do it <laughs> and he couldn't get back there. And I couldn't tell him how to, right? Because whatever he had captured was gone. <laughs> uh, oh. It was so fucking weird. That's so weird, and it, it does happen. And it, it's it professional Im impression people. Yeah, it's what I'll say too is if you're for young people out there, cherish your Kevin Costner impression. <laughs> you never know. Never, you don't know how long you'll have it. 
today could be the last day you could do your Kevin Costner impression. What if you didn't do it today? Yeah. Sit down right now with a tape recorder. Yeah. Make out your living will. <laughs> and then do it in Kevin Costner's voice. Go tell your mom you love her as Kevin Costner. Right? She loves Kevin Costner. For sure she loves Kevin Costner. They all do. Oh, God, they do. Um, want- do you remember um, the talk show host who, Craig Ferguson, had a great Kevin Costner story. It's my favorite Kevin Costner story. I think I know him. It's a quick story. It's part of a larger story where he's talking about being an alcoholic and taking <laughs> responsibility. And he goes, so I was at a party. She said, so I made fun of Kevin Costner on our show because he's a famous person and he got into some kind of bother. And he said, bother. I'm rep- and he goes, and then I saw him at a party and I could see it in his eye. He wanted to be mean, but he didn't. And that freaked me out. I just love that story. Of <laughs> Kevin Costner at a party being polite. <laughs> <laughs> against his will yeah and somebody going hi he should have been mean to me i deserved it now ah, why did that happen <laughs> do you have trivia for me that is not kevin costner related no i don't think he's involved with this okay tin cup in uh, the year 1986 okay billy joel was on a 15 member board where he was the deciding vote in a very important decision. What was the decision? Okay, he was on a 15 member board. He was on he was on a voting committee for the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Is that correct? Correct. To decide if meatloaf should be murdered and he said no he said no he said no is that correct (laughs) i know i got half of it right partial credit really good partial um oh much more fundamental yeah um 15 number board was it to vote to decide if the rock and roll hall of fame should include blues artists <laughs> no although very good okay that's... even more fundamental okay should we have a rock and roll hall of fame <laughs> less less fundamental <laughs> <laughs> uh no there were seven votes i'll tell you there were seven votes for san francisco and seven votes for cleveland Oh, and of course, Cleveland rocks. And that's what that's what he said at the board meeting. I'm sure he did. Yeah, Your Honor, with the court's <laughs> permission, I just yeah. want to say the Cleveland rocks because it is in Cleveland, right? In Cleveland, because of his tie-breaking vote. You kick-ass rocker! That's the right vote, right? That's a rock and roll vote. That's a vote for screw every. You know what? You want to go to this? You got to go to fucking Cleveland. Yeah. You know what? I had to go to Cleveland when I was on this dumb tour. You got to go now. Now you got to go. Everybody has to go. Our mutual friend, Maria Carell, is it she from Cleveland? I don't know the answer to that. Okay. Well, that's not the trivia. I'll do the trivia around here. (laughs) But I'm pleased that I got half of it right. That was really nicely done. And you gave me a wonderful clue. I should have gotten closer. But still, <laughs> I, I, I say that it's possible you're mistaken and it's the meatloaf thing. <laughs> hey, look, I'm sure they voted on more than one thing. Yeah. And he convened the whole board for one vote. And he, to his credit, he's like, we're not going to murder meatloaf. Yeah. It's like, look at him. He'll be dead in five years. Yeah. And then. They were wrong. It was quite a few more. <laughs> quite a few more years, but eventually they were right. Yep. And how weird is it that Meatloaf died after getting skinny? Yeah. Yeah. That's not cool. Not cool. But also, like, getting skinny doesn't uh, give you eternal life. No. No, cancer doesn't care how skinny you are. Those are weird commercials. <laughs> <Cancer> <laughs> 
that's a that's an ad for why not stay fat. <laughs> <laughs> it's a fucking Twinkies ad. Yep. And every one of them is different examples. See this good looking guy? He got a fatal car wreck. <laughs> car wrecks don't care about skinny. <laughs> oh, uh, those are ads. If we were in sketch comedy now, we would make those because that is really funny. Would make those. That is really funny. We'd make too many of them and we'd do it for too long. Yep. Yep. The first, first two would go great. And we'd sell a few shirts, but we'd be mad we paid for so many shirts in our back stock. <laughs> we'd lose like $8. Yeah, I'd be like, we got to write another sketch. I still have those fucking shirts in my garage. <laughs> we still sell the shirts. We don't have to write a sketch. Yeah. I'll just wear the shirts. They're mine now. I'll just stop buying shirts for eight years. Uh, now, the song that I picked for next week, I'm pretty sure isn't good. Ooh. Pretty sure. But I was thinking, so here's what happened. Yeah. You picked songs from this album, which is a great album. And yeah. then I was thinking about other great albums. And I was like, well, Glass Houses is a great album. Great album. So, and I've, Look at the track listing, which we've talked about most of them. It's banger after banger. That just, that's all radio hits and and deservedly so re-listenable, beautiful, wonderful songs. And then there's this song called Through the Long Night. <laughs> yes, there is. <laughs> yeah. And there's no other way you or I would come to the conclusion to talk about that song. Other than what 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 happened to me, I was like, well, let's look at what else is on that album. And I was like, oh, there's no way this song's good. <laughs> you remember when you were a kid and you bought an album for the first time? You definitely had this experience because moving. Yeah. So when you got into buying albums and you thought to yourself, oh, I really like this song. Surely all the songs are good. Right. And you discovered that one of them was good and it was infuriating. And yeah. you learned to become a more discerning consumer of albums. Yep. I you make up a new rule and we're like, okay, if the two singles from it are really good, then I'll yeah. buy it. And then you still get screwed. Yes. I it's bought still happens. Well, listen, and this is my fault anyway, but I was young and dumb. Um I bought the Thompson Twins album because I liked a couple of their songs and they were good. And then yep. the album was bad. But in retrospect, also the couple songs that were good were also not good. So what about, you know? Yeah. The Thompson I, Twins, by the way, have the greatest Beatles cover you'll ever hear. Wow. Now, folks, if you don't know the Thompson Twins, you shouldn't. But they were barely a band yeah, they, they were not twins, which so I guess give give them props for a good name. It was a man and a lady. I think they were married, and their black friend. That was the Thompson twins. Fantastic. And it was all that new wave electronic. No one plays an instrument in our band. Right. They did a cover of Revolution. <laughs> really. And it is. So stupid as to be elevated to great. Oh, uh, nice. I'll just tell you my favorite part. And because if you remember, Revolution is just a song about changing times in the 60s. Yeah. In that song, it goes, you say you want a revolution. Big explosions. <laughs> yeah. Why? Well, it just, it was, it was like, Worse than a Billy Joel window crash. It was just oh, sound no. effects. <laughs> it's so <laughs> great. It's so a case of somebody recording a song they don't understand. Oh, that's the best. <laughs> yeah. It's just great. Oh, those dummies. And then my last observation before we start to wrap it up, and but and then any observations you have, because sure, uh, sure. Um I've been listening to a lot of Spice Girls lately. <laughs> Great. And a lot of their songs are named almost as if it's on purpose, are named after other songs. Where yeah. 
the song already exists. And I was starting to get obsessed with that because there's a song that's fairly popular in that right now called Man Eater. Oh, okay. Huh. Man Eater's already a song, Hollow Notes, of course. Yeah. <laughs> I just think that's really funny that people call you know there's a thing. This is a thing. It's already a thing, yeah. I'd say if it was an obscure song, you'd be like, oh, but they're not using it. Would it be funny if you had a pop band and you named your song Mozart's Fifth Symphony or something? <laughs> Why not? For a minute. Yeah, for a minute. Yeah. That's, That's all I need. Made shirts. Yeah. <laughs> and then you're stuck with a bunch of damn shirts. Well, what is yeah. it with comedy and making shirts? Oh, man. Uh, any comedian who ties themselves to a shirt is going to get into drinking problem. Because you <laughs> now have to tell that joke. Yep. It's your piano man. Yeah, I and I very much admire Graham in his second life as a comedian because he's always been funny. But he retired all of his T-shirt material. Oh, good. And he was doing well with it, and that they're funny jokes. Sure. But he himself even said, you know, at some point you're like, it feels like I'm doing an infomercial for my stuff. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and and the, it feels that way. Because you are. You are. <laughs> All right. Any, <laughs> any other parting thoughts you want to share? Other observations? There's another way you would get duped into buying albums. I remember in the old days, you would see a music video uh, with a pretty girl singing. And you would think, oh, I'm going to get that album. And then you would get the album and listen to it. And you'd be like, oh, well, I can't see her. <laughs> Why did I buy this album? <laughs> That's true. I can't see her at all. Like any of these songs, I liked looking at her because she was pretty. Go-Go's I... album, at least on the Go-Go's album, um, Beauty and the Beat, on the back, you can see one of their nipples. <laughs> I did so not know. Even if you, yeah, even if you didn't like the music, that was worth buying it. Because <laughs> you could turn the album over and go, oh, my goodness. Oh, no. That's a late. That's a lady's nipple. And that means uh, that that band member is dead and was replaced by a, a lookalike. <laughs> that's right. That's yeah. their Sergeant Pepper. Oh, yeah. you know, the 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 boob is higher up because what? <laughs> <laughs> she died in a plane crash. So they hired somebody on the way to the next gig. Yeah. Now, by the way, do yourself a favor. Listen to more Go Go's. They were a great band. Great band. They weren't just like a mediocre. They were fucking great. They jam. And they were naughty girls. <laughs> <laughs> Their behind the music is fascinating. It's like, oh. wow, you guys were like, yep, we're doing the rock and roll style lifestyle. We're in lots of sex and drugs. And we're telling everybody that's what we're doing. <laughs> Good luck, record company hiding it, which they did. They did. They must pretty effectively because I didn't think I I don't think I knew that. I didn't until that, and then I liked them even more. <laughs> All right. So through uh, the long night, everybody is a slog. I'll say that I did listen to it, but it'll be yeah. fun to talk about. <laughs> Episode sixty-seven. Glass houses. Psh.